A few weeks ago, I made a video on gold prices and explained why I think prices were rallying. Since then, so many of you have been asking me what's the best way to invest in gold. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about five popular ways of investing in gold and ranking them based on the kind of return on investment you can come to expect. But before I do that, please do consider liking this video because it helps with the algorithm. With that out of the way, let's start with the most popular gold product, jewelry. People buy jewelry for two main reasons. One, you get the benefit of any appreciation in gold price. Two, it's jewelry. You can wear it, you can gift it, and it's a status symbol for most families. So you may be inclined to think that this is a good way to begin investing in gold. Unfortunately, there are a few things that you need to remember before you take up this option. First, you have to visit a reputed gold retailer in India. Now, I say reputed because you still have people selling gold with dubious origins. For example, a retailer may sell you 18 karat gold by marketing it as 22 karat gold without a hallmark. To avoid this, it's ideal to visit a reputed store and check for purity using a karat meter. And when you do this, you will know that you're getting exactly what you paid for. Now, let's assume that you're in one of these authentic stores and you decide to buy a 22 karat gold chain. If it has stones in it, say pearls for example, then you need to make sure that the retailer values the gold and the stone separately. This way, you won't end up paying gold rates for stones. For simplicity's sake, I'm assuming you're buying a plain gold chain weighing about 10 grams in total. If the price of 22 karat gold stands at 6,000 rupees per gram, then you'll end up spending 60,000 rupees on the gold itself. But that's not the only money you'll end up spending. You will also have to pay the making and wastage charges. This could range anywhere between 6% to 25% of the total value of gold. Higher even if it's an intricate design. Afterwards, you have to pay GST, 3% on the gold and 5% on the making charge. So here's what your final bill will look like. Price of gold, 10 grams, 60,000 rupees. Making and wastage charges, 12%, 7,200 rupees. GST, 3% on the gold and 5% of the making charge adds up to 2,160 rupees. Total, 69,360 rupees for the chain. Now, imagine you decide to sell the chain after one year. What kind of return can you expect? Well, the first thing you have to remember is that jewelers won't return the making charges, the wastage charges and the GST. That money is gone. So, all you're left with is the gold. If you're exchanging it for another piece of jewelry, you will get the full price of gold. But if you're returning it for cash, you're unlikely to get the full price because retailers buy and sell jewelry at different rates. They need their margin as well. So the buyback value could only add up to about 90%. So if gold prices rallied by 10% in one year, then here's what you will finally receive at the end of that year. Making charges, nothing. GST, nothing. Net price of gold, 66,000 rupees because of the 10% rally. But considering you'll only receive 90% of the buyback value, you get 60,000 at the end. So for an investment of 69,360 rupees, you end up making 60,000 rupees, despite the fact that gold prices rallied by about 10% in that one year. As an investment option, this isn't the best thing you can do, obviously. But if you're buying jewelry, the sentimental value alone can be worth it if you're planning on wearing it. So it ultimately depends on you. Anyway, if jewelry is not a good option, what about gold coins? Are they a better alternative? Well, imagine you buy a 10 gram gold coin. Here's what your final bill will look like. Price of 22 karat 10 gram gold coin, 60,000 rupees. Making charge, 3%. And yes, there's a making charge because gold coins still have to be minted. This adds up to about 1,800 rupees. GST, 1,890 rupees. And total price, 63,690 rupees. Now, if you assume the same example, that is 10% rally in gold price for one year, then here's what you will get back if you return the gold coin at the end of that year. Making charges, nothing. GST, nothing. Net price of gold, 66,000 rupees because of the 10% rally. But the buyback value of gold will only be 98% as opposed to 90% earlier because gold coins are much easier to buy and sell. But still, jewelers will take the 2% margin, so you will lose about 2%. And at the end, you will receive 64,680 rupees. You actually make a gain of 990 rupees this time around. But since you sold it within one year, it will attract a short-term capital gains tax. The 990 rupees gets added back to your income 
and you will be taxed based on your marginal rate. So at the end, you will receive much less than 990 rupees. In fact, once again, it's a slightly better investment option than jewelry, but a poor investment option nonetheless when you look at it holistically. And I'm assuming that there are no storage costs involved in both cases. If there is, then the return profile gets even worse. But wait, what about digital gold? Surely it's a better alternative since you don't have making, wastage and storage costs, no? Well, not quite. But before I get there, a small plug about my company, Ditto Insurance. I know that gold is a good investment option for most of you looking to protect against life's future uncertainties. But there's another product that can be a literal lifesaver if something happens to you. That is a term insurance policy. For just over 10,000 rupees, you can get a term policy with a cover of 1 crore or even more. And in my opinion, this should be the first step in your financial journey, even before you start buying gold. So if you're looking to buy a term insurance policy, make sure to check out Ditto Insurance. I've linked it in the description below. We have IRDI certified experts who have already advised over 200,000 customers. So if you want to discuss your insurance needs, just head over to the link in the description box and our advisors will take care of the rest. Okay, going back to digital gold. Now let's suppose you buy 10 grams of 24 karat digital gold. For simplicity's sake, I'm assuming that the price is 60,000 rupees once again. Now, when you buy it online, you will see that there's no making and wastage charge, but you will still have to pay the 3% GST. However, you will see something very interesting. If you try and buy digital gold from one of these online websites, you will see that there's a difference between the buy and the sell price. This is because most platforms charge a spread, their margin, to store, transport and insure the physical gold that's backing your digital gold purchases. And this difference could go as high as 6 to 7%. So if you add the GST of 3% and the spread of 6%, you will lose 9% almost instantly. Meaning even if gold price rallies by 10%, you make a gain of less than 1%. And you have to contend with taxes here also, which means that this is also a very poor investment option, even though there have been many platforms selling digital gold in the past few years, and there's been a rebranding exercise of sorts. Okay, then, so how can one buy gold without incurring these exorbitant charges? Well, one option is to consider a gold ETF or a gold exchange traded fund. Here, you will have a fund that's holding gold assets on behalf of its investors. And if you buy shares in this gold ETF, your ownership represents a portion of the total gold held by the fund. It's as good as buying the gold yourself because if gold prices rally by 10%, then the value of your ETF will also more or less rise by 10%. You can also sell this ETF on the exchange whenever you please. And like digital gold, there is no making charge, there is no wastage charge, and you don't even have to pay a GST. You will only have to bear the expense ratio, which is usually less than 1%. So in many ways, if gold prices rallies by 10%, you can make around 9% in gains by investing in a gold ETF. The only problem is the taxation structure. Since April 2023, all gains from gold ETFs will incur a short-term capital gains tax. The gains are added to your total taxable income and taxed accordingly. But there's a small difference. With the previous three options we've discussed so far, that is jewelry, gold coins, and digital gold, short-term capital gain tax are only imposed if you sell the gold within three years of buying it. If you hold the gold for more than three years, you only have to pay 20% long-term capital gains tax and you get indexation benefit, meaning the government will take into account the actual inflation before they calculate the gains you've made, and you end up paying less tax if you hold the gold simply for more than three years. Unfortunately, with gold ETFs, this provision isn't available anymore, and you end up paying short-term capital gains tax on the entire proceeds you make irrespective of the holding period. Fortunately, there's one other way to invest in gold, where you have no GST, no making and wastage charges, no spread, and no taxes. What's that, you ask? Sovereign gold bond. And here's how it works. If you choose to invest in a sovereign gold bond, then the government, that is the sovereign, will make a list of promises. They'll tell you, number one, we will match the price of gold eight years from now. Number two, we will give you an additional interest of 2.5% every year. Number three, if you don't sell these bonds for eight years, that is until maturity, we will not tax the gains at all. Number four, 
you can also sell these bonds after 5 years if you wish, but you will have to pay long-term capital gains tax of 20% with indexation benefits. So all in all, with sovereign gold bonds, you can capture the full gain in gold prices, make an additional 2.5% interest every year, incur absolutely no additional charge, and avoid taxes if you hold the bonds to maturity. This is undoubtedly the best way to invest in gold if you decide to hold them for 8 years. The downside, however, is that you can't sell these bonds for at least 5 years and even then, you may not have a lot of buyers lining up. So, you may be stuck with these bonds for a while. And yeah, that's it. We've covered all the popular gold investment options and this is kind of my final rating. Bear in mind, this is only considering the best return on investment and it doesn't take into account the actual utility of gold. If you need to use gold, you need jewelry, not sovereign gold bonds. So please be mindful of that. Anyway, I hope this video was useful and let me know what you want me to cover next. I will make sure that I listen to your requests. But until then, I hope you have a nice day. Bye-bye.